I'm doing art A-level, and I'm sitting in my exam, and I'm painting celery, Heinz baked beans, and corned beef. And I'm trying to make a nice composition, and I'm just measuring and trying to get my colours with my pastels, knowing that I was failing my exam at that moment. 14 hours of boredom. Not long later, I opened up my lovely envelope and I have an N. I didn't even know what an N was. It was known as a near miss. <laughs> Can't you just say fail? I mean, this wasn't... So it kind of gets you... Uh, uh, brother, he did it like a Pollock painting. And it was in, it was in, the, in the house and there was all these wonderful colours. And I didn't really know much about it. I've always tried to measure kind of left brain thinking uh, artwork. And it started to move. And I was like, there's more in there. This could come out. And there's a shape there. And, 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 and there's a dinosaur moving. And it's chewing on, on corned beef. And I thought, oh, there's, there's, there's something going on here. I pulled him to the side and said, how do you do this? He said, basically, get yourself some canvas, get some paint get some spoons, and splash. And I dip my spoon into the paint. And I thought, you know that smell of that paint that comes out? I smelt it, and I got down onto my knees, and I threw it, and I splashed, and I did all sorts of, my body's moving, and I was sort of emotionally involved in it, and all my tension was just going onto this canvas, and it was finished, and I lifted it up, and I thought, that is rubbish. <laughs> But the thing was, I didn't care. It was rubbish. It was truly rubbish painting. But I did not care. I loved it. I just became uh, obsessed with it. And I've just been in the garage, and then suddenly I'm in this gallery, and my head is just going, I, I, I can't identify myself as a painter. I just, it doesn't make sense to me. I couldn't actually bring it into myself. And I sold on my, on my first art exhibition, 400 pounds for painting, my first one. I was like, oh, that's all right, thank you very much. But I still couldn't see myself as a painter. And then I just started to sell a bit more, and this was like 2007, and things were going very well. I thought, I'm going to become a professional. This is great. I was getting excited, I was painting more, and people were buying, I was like, this is great. And I'm almost there, and then... <laughs> Financial crash. And it was very interesting because I was, there were people interested in one painting, there was about three people interested in one painting. And I could never figure out really what was it that I couldn't connect to with the painter. As a performer, I feel that you give your art out and then there's a sudden reaction that you get back and you're kind of bouncing off this uh, exchange of energy, which I loved as a performer. I love that exchange. And the paintings, I couldn't quite figure out what it meant to me as an artist, how I actually worked with my relationship and uh, my way of communicating with other people. And then I got it. I was standing there, and what I had felt, and I had put on the canvas, somebody else felt something. They interpreted it in their own way, and then informed me what they saw, and then we created a dialogue. So it became like a triangular communication, which was very different from the two-way communication I had as a, a performance artist. And then that was it. Then the identities came in, that's what it is for me. It's a kind of triangular communication that happens in exchange from my creative uh, emotional state to somebody else's creative emotional state, and it bounces off the canvas, and it moves, and it changes, and these paintings change for me. Year after year, they start to tell new stories, and they're not static. They move, and they evolve, and they change, and that's what, yes, now I identify with that.